the complete fairy tales of the Grim... Grimoire? Clapsing. Clapsing. Go ahead. Oh. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Board and Scale podcast, where we talk about games, uh, and that's kind of mostly it, but sometimes we talk about other stuff. Uh, you have three of us here today. Me, Sebo. Kevin. Dwayne. Wow. That buildup was intense. Um, <laughs> like camping. And we have a few topics to talk about today that maybe you guys can uh, contribute to. And I'm going to just throw out the first one. Do you guys participate in blocking strategies that are otherwise known as, you know, can be called hate drafting? Um, and I will go first because I have a very recent example of this. <laughs> <laughs> may or may not be why it's on there. Um, me and Kenzie are playing through our 10 by 10 and one of the games on there is Underwater Cities. In that game, there is, there's, there's two things that are limited, there are, or there's, there's probably more than that, right? But the biggest ones for scoring are the government contracts in there that are when someone gets to their requirements, they take it and that's it. The next thing is the three cost special cards that you have to go to a spot, an action. You have to do an action to take it and you have to pay to play it. They are generally a big scoring opportunity for the end of the game. You still have to build your engine up towards that so that you can actually exchange whatever it's asking for. But in this game that we're playing, I thought what I was doing was maximizing my end game points by because I, was, I happened to be the first player to go in the last two rounds. The action spots are limited. So the first turn of each round, I went there to secure the special scoring card. The second, uh, the, the, so the last round I did that, Kenzie was like, are you fucking kidding me? Because, and I didn't realize this, she was also planning on getting at least one of both of the cards that I took, apparently, because she had a way more built-up engine for that scoring card than I did. So she would have benefited a lot more from it. But for me, I got half the points that were maximum on there from the card. I got double the points I would have got without that card from leftover resources. Not only that, I took a shit ton of points from Kenzie. And I only won that game by like seven points. So while she was very upset that I did those things <laughs> unknowingly, uh, I would have lost if I didn't do it. So knowingly, if I did know what was going on, I would have taken them anyway. Because not only does it get me more points, it takes away a lot of points from her. And she was like, are you kidding me? Why would you say that to me? And I was like, I mean, it just makes sense to me. You know, if, it's, if I'm going to gain four points or take 30 points away from you, I'm taking 30 points away from you. Yeah. Unless that is the name of the game, I, I, that doesn't matter to me. Like, if I need that thing, if I need that thing to win, and you so happen to need it too, of course I'm going to take it. But if I don't need it, I'm, I'm, but I, but there's something else that I do need. I'm going to take the thing that I need. Because, yes, I may be taking points away from you, but not taking the thing I need. I'm kind of taking the points away from me, too. So, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maximize. I'm going to maximize what I can do to win rather than screwing you over. Because I don't know. It, just, it, it feels like screwing somebody over is kind of messing me up, too. Like, I'm going to take what I need rather than messing with you. And if you get what you need, good. I think you're talking about two different parts of the game, though. Because uh, early game, <clears throat> excuse me, early game stuff, I'm with Dwayne, right? Like, I'm worrying about building my engine. I'm doing my thing. Yeah. I'm focusing on that. Um, usually, I'm encumbered enough with the decisions that I'm making to see, to optimize, right? Well, if I do this, this will affect me this way. 
I do this, it'll be a slight improvement, but I take some risk, whatever, right? Those minor things. Now, if I have to consider what you're doing and how my choices will affect you every single time I'm, I'm playing, I, that gets exhausting and I don't want to do it. So I just focus on myself. Now, the last round or two rounds of a game, when you're like, everything is pretty clear, you kind of know where everything's going to be, and you can kind of, all right, yep, if I make this decision, it's going to get me eight points. If I make this one, it'll get me ten points. If I make this one, it'll only get me six points, but it'll deny my opponent who's winning right now an extra ten points. You can do that math, right? Yeah. That's just That's just competitive play. That's not, you know... That's the end game, right? Like if you make a choice to, to to not take the thing that's beneficial for you and your opponent wins because of it, that just means you're a bad player, right? That's probably why I lose more often <laughs> than that. And I guess, I guess really, do you call that even hate drafting? Because I technically did benefit more than I would have normally by taking a card. She just would have gotten way more off of it. So the, I don't really even think it's... I mean, the hate drafting would be... You're taking something that you that that no does not benefit you whatsoever, just so they don't get it. I think it's more. I'll take that a step further. I'll say that it's um, taking an action that's suboptimal for you in order to have a greater impact on an opponent. Doesn't mean it has no benefit for you whatsoever. Like if I'm playing a set collection game and I take something that's just not a set that I'm looking at at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, sure, but like. <clears throat> if I could still get a point per like color of that suit or whatever at the end of the game. Okay. I mean, that's not, yeah, it's hate drafting. Sure. But I still have a benefit from it. So, so another version of that, right? Have you guys played Calico? You've played Calico. I know Dwayne, you've played yeah. Calico is one of those games where it looks so cute and all and, <laughs> and friendly on the outside. So prone to hate drafting. Right. And that's one of those games where you come up towards your last couple spots in the game. If, if it's not something that came out for you that exactly what you're looking for, what do you do? You look at the opponent's boards. Yeah. Sure. And if it is exactly what they need, you're taking it. Yeah. Even if you're like, oh, but I could just take this and get another three point button for a color. No, you're going to take their 17 point double tile thing away. I, I think there's something to be said too for how many players are in the game <clears throat> and like kind of the, the how the game tracks its scoring mechanisms. Because, first of all, if it's a large player game, like more than just two players, you're hate drafting a specific player. So that feels a lot more targeted, right? Like, I'm going to do this against you Um, versus two player. (laughs) It's only the other, yeah. (laughs) Like, only hurting the other person regardless. Exactly. And then the other half of this is that how, how obvious is it that you're making, you're seeing what the points look like. You know, if you've got a lot of end game scoring or something like that, or, or points aren't really clear um, until everyone does like the final scoring kind of stuff. Um, like an example would be like Scythe, right? Where like there's all that kind of, hey, once it's all done, you got to, how many hearts do I have and this, that, and that, and whatever I got. So, I mean, some rule books will literally bake it in there to be like, hey, there's a penalty if you count other players, like if you waste people's time counting their scores. You can get penalized. You never seen that before. Never seen I've that never before. seen that. Yeah, I'll have to think. I can't remember what. Uh, there's at least one game I know for sure has a penalty like that, where like players are taking their taking too long because they're counting up stuff. Like other players can like BS and they that's would, crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, but yeah, if you if you if you can tell if it's clear, like all right, well, yeah, I can see that you're at this point and I'm at this point. And even if it is a multiplayer game and you're like, I'm in second place, you're in first place, yeah, I'm going to target you because you're the person who, who can beat me. Well, here's the thing. I had led the entire game, and I was so terrified of her endgame scoring, as always, <laughs> right? Because Kenzie has a, a knack for just scoring a crazy amount of points at the end of the game. But so I didn't realize what I, I, didn't realize what I was doing. So I wouldn't have technically called it a hate draft. I took those actions because I was like, that's kind of how I'm going to get the most points. And then she was like, but why? And then she explained to me how many points that would have given her. And I was like, I didn't take this as a hate draft, but I just want you to know, if I had known that, I would have. So that card that was coming with me, if I knew or not. I mean, you have to, 
every decision you make in a game, especially towards the end of the game, you should be maximizing the points that you can get for that action. I mean, we're playing first rat last night. I had one action left. I had already gotten all of my, my you get points by placing <coughs> cubes at different places. I didn't realize that like once you ran out of the cubes, you were, you were just done. So like everyone else got like a whole extra round and I'm like, I'm out of cubes. Ooh, this sucks. Speed cubed. Yeah. Um, but fortunately there was a spot that I could go to that got me 10 more points because there was a, uh, a chip still on it that was end game bonus points. So, you know, did you end up winning? I did. Secondary question. Is first rat, is that what you call, if rats were presidents, is that what you call the first, first it, the wife of the president rat? Is it the first rat? No. Because that'd be like saying first human. <laughs> they them. But, they, but, it's, <laughs> but it's, the, it's the first lady or the first, first gentleman, right? So what's the, the, what's the honorary titles for rats? I can't wait for the first gentleman. First miss. I don't know. I don't oh, know. But it's not like, is it Mr. Rat and Mrs. Rat? Yeah. Okay, then it would just be First Lady. First Lady Rat. That's yeah. lame. Yeah. Because, mm. I mean, there's no, like, it's just male and female, right, when it comes to animals. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> I'm not going there. Wow. <laughs> Dwayne's trying to get us canceled already, guys. 2024 <laughs> just started. I mean. <laughs> All right. Well, the, the other topic I have is kind of a downer. So I'm going to, we're going to move on. Oh, to boy. Else. You, right. guys, you don't want to, you don't want to do the downer topic? No. All right. Hey, I got, I got a uh, hangover one that we didn't do from last week. Let's do that. Um, to kind of, to kind of, you know. Pull it all together, right? How much, if at all, do awards affect how you're buying decisions for games? Oh, award like Dice Tower award. Dice Tower, whether it be like a Spiel a, de Jahr. yeah, like a formal award that you know usually gets stamped on the the box or whatever, or <clears throat> you know large content creators like you said Dice Tower or whatever things like that. I so, used to care about the Dice Tower award until I started watching their videos. When they like receive a game and they see the dice tower seal of approval and they're like, I don't know who gave them that, but and I'm like, oh, so it's not like a, a thing where they all kind of agree and approve. It's like one person said something kind of positive on there. So they just kind of slap it on, you know, Spiel de Jar. I still think that that's prestigious because probably because it's a different language. So <laughs> everything's more prestigious in German. Definitely. And that's the only really reasoning i have for that i only recently learned it's like usually like kid you know less complex games like that kind of a hit an entire hit a wider audience you know, usually mean, are the ones that win the spill the jars I feel like it would make sense spill the jar because <laughs> like sense? if like i mean if not a lot of people are gonna play it and it, this then is probably it's not like, popular. Yeah. I mean, no, not that it's not popular because, like, I'm Vo sure more Voidfall? people are playing. I'm sure more people are playing Ticket to Ride than are playing Brass. Just by, like, complexity level. So, like, yeah. more people are going to get in an opinion on Ticket to Ride rather than something like Brass. But I feel like the kind of people who are like, oh, I play Ticket to Ride once every six months when I go to my aunt's house are not going to be the people inputting their opinion to those places, you know, versus yeah. like someone who plays a void fall or any other mind clash game, right? They're, they're probably have reviews and all this stuff written everywhere and they're always into games. Well, the problem though is, is you're, you're, you're talking about you're using like a uh, ticket to ride as an example, but that wouldn't count, right? You're not giving awards to games that have been in the market for two, three, four five plus years, right? You're, you're giving awards to new games. For the most part, right? Most awards I'm thinking of well, are I like, just mean like complexity level. Well, I know, but you're talking about, <clears throat> you know, what is it going to take before a game, even if it's a lower complexity level game, to show up on the shelves at Target or Walmart to where it's getting the kind of mass press so that people are picking it up and putting it in their, you know, getting it into their, you know, getting to the kind of, uh, notoriety that Ticket to Ride has or Settlers of a Time. You know what it is? Dice Tower Award. 
So it, I uh, also target don't... Target product manager sees that on there, and they go, oh, let's order those. 10,000 of them. Fair enough. I also don't know how it works either. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what the criteria is for an award, something like... Something like the Spiel de, spiel de Jar. Spill the Jar. Um, like... Yeah, I just know that they, they, I just know, hey, that's game of the year. I don't know why. That's game of the year. Somebody's game. You of translate the, year. the yeah. German that's on the reward, and you're like, most popular game for five to seven year olds. <laughs> <laughs> Man, no wonder Dwayne loves it. Well, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, but no, uh, awards, I don't care. Again, I'm just going to go back to what I said last week. If it doesn't look fun, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to play it. You ha- so you have to be initially drawn in. Yeah. Okay. So like cover art matters way more than than awards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's not that's that's fair. I I agree with you with the awards. I couldn't care less. I, doesn't matter. Like I less value for um, <laughs> Dice Tower or or any of those other content creators. Um, I guess the more formalized ones, maybe even like the BGG annual awards, like. Okay, like oh, I'm aware, like okay, I'll pay attention to it, but it doesn't factor into to whether or not I'm going to buy a game or be interested in playing it. I also think you could say that about anything that gets an award too. Yeah. Like, yeah, it has an award, but I'm not really interested in that thing, so I don't really care. Speaking of awards, a little bit of an extra tangent. Did you guys hear that Nick Offerman got awarded for the best guest appearance on a show for what? episode three of Last of Us? No. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of a wild award. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> the best cameo? I, th- I, I don't know if it's cameo. It's something, but like not a main actor, like someone who just had one episode appearing, appearance. I think it's called, well, I mean, a cameo is when it's a famous person usually being themselves. Usually themselves, but not necessarily always. Yeah. I think you can be like a, a, a character as well. I don't know. I haven't seen Last of Us though. I mean, really not. No, I it I need to. It's like popular enough that I even with my normal three season rule, I won't like. I should just watch it. But I've seen the first episode, and the first episode like is really good. It's a really good first episode. <laughs> um, and I mean, the game. I think it might be the best game I've ever played. So like part one or part two, part one. Okay. Yeah. I th- I I, people I still hated think part two. I still no. I mean, yeah, they did, but people are dumb, yeah dumb. Uh, I like part one better than part two, but still saying that part two is a great game. Yeah, for sure. Caitlin Devers is playing Abby. That's a whole other thing. If you've seen Booksmart, anyways, <laughs> we can go back to board games. That was just for basically is me there and Dwayne. A Last of Us board game coming out at some point. Oh, I think it's called Dead of Winter. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm surprised. No, that's Walking Dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like Last of Us is basically any other zombie game, right? Sure. So, but what makes yeah, like what would you do to make it better or different? Right. You know what? Sound, you know what it would fit probably. actually. No, you know what it would fit. Zombie slash mushroom game. Mm, we have Simon right now. Mushrooms are the hotness, dude. That's true. Mycelium, we have mycelium, mycelium, yep. Undergrove, mushlings, mushlings. That's four, four mushroom games. We have the all those producer p- publishers get together with the Simon. Last of Us people and with Simon when we have a zombie mushroom game. Yeah, would it be a so you'd want that's go a license? You want to go a zombicide build their system? I just don't. That's just easy, right? Yeah. If it was just going to be a cash grab, yeah. They do the zombie side system, slap the Last of Us. But I also think Last of Us is one of those zombie shows like Walking Dead where it focuses more on the people than it does on the zombies. For sure. Like zombies is just a problem. Yeah. Sure. I also don't know, I don't know shit about Last of Us, but I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say there are not enough ancillary characters to support a Simon, like a full Simon campaign where they end up with like 8,000 extra Kickstarter exclusive playable characters. You know what mm. I mean? No, nah, from not. from so the show, you could like <clears throat> from the game. Yeah, I think there there could be like would no, anyone no. There's enough for a base though? game. But you know no, what I mean? You no. know what I'm talking about? Like when it's like zombicide, like Black Plague, and they they create a character that is very explicitly supposed to be like Xena Warrior Princess. Yeah, so people are like, oh my god, I want this. I mean, how they throw like the boys 
and, and no, that one's like explicit. That. Like, yeah, that's a straight up one. I'm talking about like the subtle, the subtle nods, right? Mm-hmm. So like, <clears throat> oh, this is supposed to be this person. Yeah. So like the OG, um, I think it was the very first Kickstarter for Zombicide. They did um, Bruce Campbell's um, Ash, Ash. Um, and you know he wasn't called Ash. He was called something else or whatever. But you like you look at the sculpt and you're like. That's Ash, oh. right? 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, so they do, they do stuff like that all the time, but obviously they've kind of, you know, beaten around, beaten that to death. But, uh, you know, I think it'd probably actually be better for it than Simon would probably be um, Steamforge games. I don't think I have anything by them. They did the Resident Evil series, Dark Souls. Okay. So they do a lot of... Um, grittier stuff. A lot of grittier stuff. Also do a lot of IP ports from video games already. Um so not all of them hit, not of them do great, but their sculpts are amazing. Um, they'd probably get more creative with uh, the gameplay content rather than um, and ag- Zombicide. See and just again, I, I know you haven't played it or seen it. It's like it would have to be a, like a campaign game. I was going to say that. If they made it like a legacy Because it is a story game. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that would make more sense, again, for... Oh, um, Simon, we're copywriting this, okay? <laughs> Patent pended, trademark. No, so you. I don't think I'm, I don't I'm think it Steve would. After we're done here, I mean, maybe it would work, but I don't think it would be true to Last of Us if it was just a, a, a zombie shooter. Here's the thing: something like that. You're bored, right? It comes with like ten chapters, and it's all like roll up stickers that you reveal the next the next episode, and you slap it onto the board. And it's an entire new board with a new sticker. And then that you play through whatever the episode is, right? But it's a story revolving more around, like, the mechanics revolve more around the choices that the characters are making, that the players are making for the characters, mm-hmm. and not like, oh, roll the die, shoot it, move on. You know? Yeah. Um, so, I think it'd be cool. So I don't think they do a lot with IP, but that'd be a, that'd probably be more like Awakened Realms. They do everything is obviously super narrative driven. Driven, yeah. Yeah. They could, I don't know if it would work because, again, I haven't played the game, but like their new Stalker game seems like that would be a good port. Stalker game? It's literally called Stalker. It's a, it is an actual, I think that is an IP. I think that is a, a video game. Um, no, I know it's, I know it's a video game. Um, yeah. Do you still have your Atari? Never had one. <laughs> I'm old. I'm old. You no, the very first He had Dreamcast. We no, I never owned a Dreamcast, but we did play them. The very first my parents wouldn't let us have um play gaming consoles. Um, but I do remember going over to play my my best friend's I like two doors down from me, uh his Sega. Um, but like not three doors down though? Not three doors down. No, Dang. no kryptonite. No. But the first the first uh one that we owned, my brother bought a second hand and Nintendo 64 like set like many 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 years after it had been released like I don't remember what platform they were on at that point but it literally PS2 it. came out and I think it may have actually seriously the old been freaking... I think PlayStation 2 may have actually been out dang man and we went out and we got this and it was literally just for the sole purpose of being able to play um Goldeneye oh to, well that's like everybody's like nostalgia game though so well, at least it was a, back at least then. it was, was a good one like a what's i'm saying <laughs> at least it was a good one right yeah one of the ones that stood the test of time the hand is like six pixels <laughs> just like it's just, just a mitt yeah it's just a, a goalie man <laughs> have you have you played it no i haven't oh god it literally is it's just <laughs> Because you come around unarmed and you like, or you can like start with weapons or whatever. But we've always- seen enough memes from 1988. <laughs> <you know? laughs> That's best though is you you turn on one shot kills, and then you play like the house rule that you can't um, shoot anybody until they have a weapon. So like you find somebody who doesn't have a weapon and you just like follow them around until they pick up a weapon. But they always forget that the slap is technically counts as a one shot kill. So like you're they're waiting and then you just. <laughs> Well, <laughs> good times. That is nostalgia. Any damage equals gone. That's the programming that they did. Basically. I yep. can't even imagine. 
programming that stuff. It must have been crazy. Anyways, hey. I did want to mention before I forget when we're talking about cameos, Underwater Cities, uh, each player has a default little action, extra action card. One of them, exhibit. Oh, nice. Mr. Pimp My Ride. That's that's <laughs> an insane. <laughs> what? Vladimir Suchi. For Underwater Cities, this game about building your <laughs> Atlantis underwater, <laughs> one of the character cards is, it's not named, it's one of those, it's but a nod it's to, be. to a very exact type of persona. So can you, um, with, his, with his card, are you able to put televisions underneath your submarine? <laughs> no, that'd or be funny. The, like I put an w- extra sub in your sub. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it really quick. I love that. I love that. It's going to be in here. You guys you guys, keep the show rolling. That's keep ridiculous. It going, keep it going. Well, while he's going, I have another topic I think that'll actually pair really well what we're talking about. Straight off the cuff. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Best IP crossover video game to uh, board game. Mmm. Yeah. I don't think I've played that many. Nah, I don't. I haven't either. I think the only I think the only one I played was Bloodborne, but it was a card game. It was like a <laughs> All right, we're going to have to we're going to have to hold This all, this has to be problematic. I'll put I'll put it up. <laughs> I'll zoom it up if you guys haven't seen it before. Oh <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> like they can't they can't be like <laughs> Oh, it's just a dude. It's it's two things. It's it's Star Wars and Exhibit. That is straight up Exhibit. That is wild. These are the other assistants. Why? For reference, these are the other assistants. Just some lady, generic an, white an, girl, an animal, fine underwater. Oh, they could have named this one if they named this one Echo Darwin. If they had named this one Darwin, that and would a robot. have been Wally. super uh, nostalgic too. Three totally normal flipper. You know, fitting things, kind of like basic things for the game. And then Mr. Pimp My Ride exhibit. That is so strange. Do you guys not get the reference uh, for Darwin? No. No. Darwin no. what? The dolphin. Darwindy's nuts go in your mouth. Hey! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Got it. Darwin was the name of a intelligent dolphin uh, that could speak English with assistance uh, in a late 90s. TV show or ah. early '90s TV show called Sequest DSV. Ah, so yeah, when I was <laughs> a, a, an infant, <laughs> so were you an infant or were you when still Dwayne a, did uh, not exist? Yeah, you were probably <laughs> just a gleam in your father's eye. <laughs> How are you gonna ask him if you remember? You don't get the reference. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> loser, you idiot! Uh, sucks being born, moron. <laughs> You know what? Actually, I have played another one. I've, the God of War is a card game. It's a deck builder. <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Um, Did you like it because of the IP? Or were you like, enjoyed the actual gameplay too? I liked the game too. Like, of course, the God of War is what drew me in. But I mean, it was, it's a solid game too. It's a deck builder co-op. <laughs> where... Uh, <laughs> Where it's one of those things where I should have left them out. I'm gonna leave them out actually for a bit. you make like a deck of cards that is the level, and then like at the end is a boss. So you draw your hand of cards, and it's like defenses and attacks and stuff like that. Um, and you just have to get through all of the minions, hit the boss, kill the boss, move on to the next level. I'm not gonna lie to you, I hate that. I hate when a game is made out of is made up of mostly cards. First of all, because I've seen that box, is mm-hmm. it mostly cards? The game? Yeah, it should not be in that box. It should be in a little card box. It is. A, it is a pretty. It's a big square box. box. But I don't know. I, I don't. Again, it's been a while since I played it. I just remember liking it. So I don't. I don't remember like what the layout is of the, inside that box. This that, is the cool mini or not one, right? That's just more about? an opinion on me. If it says blah blah blah, the card game, a card game. I don't mm-hmm. want to play it. I don't like anything that is like mostly a card game. Yeah, I want literally nothing. I want to, but I, I do. 
I do. I have exceptions, right? But I'm more drawn in by a board mm-hmm. where we, you know, we're sharing presents like Cthulhu, right? Fighting or just doing stuff on a shared board where it's like competitive space and you can kind of see as things going on. Like that's more my style. That's more my my like. And I don't think I've any. I've actually played any video game. IPs. Like Bloodborne was the other one I played, which is also a card game, but you... Oh, I can't remember exactly how you play I think there's dice, too. It's a full miniatures game. No, and, and I know the one you're thinking of. It's not that one. It's like a lesser known. Oh. It's a, it's a, it's like a, car, it's a card game. Okay. With, like, I, I think there are dice in it. Again, it's been a while since I played that one. It's like a box like this big. So, yeah, it's not the miniatures one. But that one is competitive. Um, so you don't think you have a single? Do you guys count phone games as video games? What? Do you yeah. count a phone game as a video game? Uh, yeah. Um, sure. If that's the case, I've played one video game IP game, and I love it. It's Plague Inc. Um, Plague Inc. the oh, board game. Okay. Yeah, that is 100% an IP video From game From a digital. Crossover. Yeah. I actually really like that game. So video game IPs for me. 100%, so far, one for one. So far, 100. The ones I've given a shot, you know. Yeah. I haven't given those other ones shots because I don't want to be disappointed. Skyrim, I'm so scared of. I want it, but yeah. I'm scared of it because I don't want to be like, yeah. okay, now I hate Skyrim. I you backed know? it because I've never played the game. Oh, and I was like, yeah, why not? Seems oh. like a good port. I played the game and I don't want to ruin the, the problem, nostalgia. It, the problem with Skyrim is, is that it, it's so all encompassing. Like it takes so much time. Yes. And uh, at this, like, I, I, it very quickly got to a point where like enough time had passed, like a couple years, that I didn't play it. And everyone's like, oh, "I've got eight thousand hours in," and I'm like, <laughs> "I just have no interest in like trying to play catch up or anything like that." So I just have never, never, ever had any interest. Tried. Oh, um, but the campaign, I was like, because of that, like, I was like, well, you know, I don't know if I'm going to like back the game, mm-hmm. you know, but I was like, it, it looks solid. It looks pretty good. So. I also don't think, I don't think it has anything to do with the game. Like, I think it's just set in it's set, Skyrim. It's set in the world. It's before the Dragonborn. Okay. It is the world of Skyrim before the Dragonborn comes into that's it. That's right. Yeah. Um, and that's like, that's fine. I like the world of Skyrim. Like I said, I just, I didn't want to. Because that was, you know, 17-year-old me that had all the time in the world yeah. to play video games was playing Skyrim, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I don't know. I, I just want to kind of leave that a perfect memory and not... To, I do think also for you, because you said you didn't play the game. Yeah. It's a whole extra effort for me, in my opinion, for you to... You are correct. ...play the game because I could just go in and know half the shit that's in the game, you know? I think that's true for a lot of IP-based games because if you don't have something that's bringing you in the yeah. barrier to entry can be higher because you're like do i care about learning about this whole universe this whole world because like you know, if you play a game like underwater cities or, or most of these right you're not forced to engage with an entire lore yeah right to to really get the most out of the game but if it is something that you're you're like really steeped in, like you're like, I've read all these books or I've seen played all these video games or these movies or whatever it is, you're like, oh, damn, I get to be this person or in you know, go through this thing that they did in the movie or the game or whatever. Um, so it definitely does help. Um <laughs> So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what I think of it. I have no idea. You do the first like, you know, it's a it's a Skyrim for you. You never played it, right? The game set up step one. Put your hero on your player board. Okay, I assume these are the player boards. Okay. Give each warrior six dingle snorfs. <laughs> if it's me, I go, okay, cool. They're probably in the box here somewhere. If it's you, you go, what the hell is a dingle snorf? You know? Yeah. Well, that's what the components are, uh, section of the of the book is for. Yeah, but it's an extra going back and forth, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's... The floozy bucks. I tried to I tried to make up like a foreign a foreign sounding word so your brain would be like what the hell Jabberwocky, yeah yeah I'm uh, actually excited for that game speaking of it's what right there the Jabberwocky hell yeah Wonderland's War yeah. yeah brother I'm ready to play it man I'm excited me too I'm actually uh, playing Ink I'm surprised you it's a good game I um I saw that you had it I did not know that it was turned into a board game and I was like well that's got to be a, just an absolute dog shit like. <laughs> 
IP like cash grab, like because that game was so popular on the phone, yeah, for so long um, that I just assumed it was just gonna be pandemic, but worse. I think I assumed that too, but when I read the back and it was like, uh, I was like, oh, this is competitive. You're eat your own virus because I like the little phone game. You know, yeah, I was the edgy person that was like, I want to kill the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Get Madagascar first. But yeah, and I actually don't know if they've made anything else besides this, if they've published anything else. Endemic creations. Yeah, but it turned out to be really... We've had this for years, yeah. like years. Well, it's it turned out to be a really good game. It's not ever gotten considered to be cold because Kenzie doesn't even really like it, mm. but I like it so much. Um, I won't say she doesn't like it, but she likes it enough, and I like it a lot. It's a neat. It's a neat little game. There is a, there is quite a bit of luck involved with like dice rolling to make sure that you can travel your virus and stuff. Well, just so you can the the only whew, the only luck involved is drawing new diseases, new traits for your disease. Infect the Olympics and rolling the die to kill countries at the end of your turn. Oh, otherwise, you everything else is a choice that you're making. Okay. Um, it's pretty. It's a pretty strategic game, honestly. I like it. We should play it sometime. It's not too crazy either, complexity okay. wise. But yeah, actually, not I actually really a, like it. Not a video game, but um, I was very interested in the Queen's Gambit just because Anya Taylor Joy's on the box. The Queen's Gambit, uh, honestly. On the wait, hold on, time out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a board game called, called the Queen's, Queen's Gambit. Gambit. Yep, based well, off the Netflix series. Playing chess. Well, you're, you're playing. You're playing as <clears throat> Anya Taylor Joy. I forgot her name in the in the show. So it's like you get from <laughs> what I've seen. You get like a hand of cards that are chess moves, and I think it's like an action program game. So like you you play like three cards down. You flip one, and it's like knight. So you move your piece like a knight, and then pawn. You move it like a pawn. And you're just trying, I think you're like trying to collect like tokens off the board while avoiding that is or, an IP cash grab. That is the way that sounds. That sounds candy land as hell. <laughs> yeah. But like Anya Taylor Joy, though. Yeah. You yeah. just just buy a picture of her, <laughs> just buy a portrait of her. Just watch yeah. Queen's Gambit again. Yeah. yeah. You got a Netflix account. Or The Northman. Watch it. I have not seen The If North you want to see her a little bit dirty, you know, a little bit grunged up from just Split? being. No. No? No. Okay. No, uh, she's just you know she's like a slave lady in in that movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, and then turns out she has some kind of mystical prophecy or new, something. It's, new, what, it's, it's what Hamlet. it feels like. At new the mutants. End. It's, it's Hamlet. How about that one? What? North. The Northman is just Hamlet. Hamlet. Yeah. Chicks What's a here. Hamlet? Hamlet. The. Sh- the <laughs> 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 No, what, is what's it, a Hamlet? Yeah, it's Hamlet. Hamlet. Yeah, it's ha- Hamlet or Macbeth. I can't remember which one it is. Oh, it's basically just a modern telling of that Shakespeare with a different skin. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember if it's Hamlet or Macbeth. That's funny. Well, this one's way better. There's so much violence in it. Yeah, and it's really cool. And it's got Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> he just got a star on the, he on did. the Hollywood. The, which is kind of crazy to me. Hey, it's Bill? Willem. 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 Uh, is the nickname for Willem the same as the one for William? Do you, well, I don't think right? so. Defoe? <clears throat> do, you call, do you think they call him Willem or do you, do you think he makes it? I don't think we're allowed to call Willem. him that. Because like nobody says William Smith. Ill. But everybody says Willem Defoe. That's fair. Mr. Defoe, congratulations. I know you watch this show every week. <laughs> and I just want to say we support you. you know? <clears throat> and also, how dare you bring up that guy? Hey, no. Mr. Will- Bill. Oh, no. There's, well, before we go to that, Willem Dafoe, have you ever seen Antichrist? Uh-uh. You like horror movies, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. Nothing? Report back. Okay. I can't, oh, no, no. It's, <laughs> no, it's a fucking experience, okay. man. Is it's, it old movie? Uh, no, it's, I mean, it's probably less like 10 years old, maybe, at this point. Antichrist. Antichrist. It is unsettling. Really? Say less. I it, love being unsettled. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's slow. It's a that, slow I love a slow game of tension building. <laughs> oh, was that bad? <laughs> but I mean, I mean, it starts out good. I mean, it starts out pretty action packed. 
Oh man, I say just no can't more. Wait for you. Oh, this is gonna be great. <laughs> I'm gonna look for it. Uh, this is not an endorsement to anybody to actually watch this movie, unless you, unless, unless you're me, unless you're signing up for. <laughs> Viewer yeah. discretion is advised. Absolutely. So, any other IP games? Any other ones? I had Plague, and that's I think I'm. Maybe it. I guess Villainous. Oh, Villainous. Oh, well, that yeah. counts technically. Yeah, right? it's an IP. That whole system. It's an IP. I give it a seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought gotta, we were just doing. I thought we were just doing video. I games. give it a six and a half. I mean, it started with like video games. There's because, technically Disney video games. Okay. <laughs> I mean, a- anything that's an intellectual Marvel property. video games. Then yeah, I've got I've got villainous. I like villainous. Okay. Quick rating. Seven. Okay. No six and a half. You. I've never played it. You hate it. I don't, don't like you? Disney. <gasps> there it is. The mouse. It comes out, ladies and gentlemen. I don't like Disney. This man hates Disney. He hates children. He hates the world. He hates the mouse. He hates everybody. He hates you. <laughs> Two or three of those things are true. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, there are some. some Let's figure out which one. There are some Disney adults that be going, be going a little bit crazy. Yeah, it's a literally a red flag. Do you hear about the Turpin family? Dude, if your if your profile photo, ladies, has a you with in front of the castle or whatever with Disney ears, it's not happening. Mickey ears. Mickey ears. What did I say? Disney ears. Yeah. yeah. You know he's I mean. hey, he's 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 free, free domain now. He is. Yeah. Steve. No, I, don't, I don't know if he is now, but he will be. Speaking of IP, um, the creator of IP Winnie in the bathroom. The, <laughs> the creator of <laughs> that should not have been that funny. I knew it was coming too. <laughs> it's your delivery. IP in the bathroom. <laughs> it's becoming as much about horror movies as anything else. <laughs> Anyways, what were you saying? <laughs> I don't know. The creator of what? Oh, no, the creator of um, the uh, Winnie the Pooh horror movie, uh, oh my Blood God. and Honey, uh, apparently had the audacity to warn people about uh, making uh, horror movies or content about Steamboat Willie. Seems kind of like an odd flex. Like warned you. people about it? Yeah. Just because your movie was dog shit doesn't <laughs> oh, mean anybody people else's like, will Oh, be. no one will give you a chance because it's a yeah, I don't beloved know. thing. Yeah. Ooh, but, board game slash horror movie mashup title blood and honey buzz <laughs> <laughs> kind of good one huh hey kind of good one hey it's a it's a it's a uh hidden movement right one against all it remains mostly the same except one of you <laughs> is Pooh bear trying to come and steal all the nectar and honey you know with probably okay. like final girl mechanics or all right. something like that i don't know okay Saw five tribes. Saw five of tribes. Five tribes. Saw, saw five tribes. Saw five five tribes. That's cheating. But okay. okay. Saw five because you just did like a number. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just picked a number. <laughs> you can literally pick any number one through ten at this point <laughs> and make saw that blank. I know that's true because they do have like one through. <laughs> there are ten of them now. Oh my gosh, yeah, dude! T- saw X well, eleven. Yeah, no, it's only ten out. X was the most recent one. Because I don't think... Is is Spiral? I have no idea what that is. Right. I guess I okay. missed that one. Oh, yes. Is it like is a... considered in the in the universe. Is it like... Is it nine, though? Yeah. Okay. People... Well... well never mind, then. Or is it, it an is 11th not movie? technically Saw 9, but people consider it for the timeline. Okay. Nine. Never mind, then. It's, 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 it's whatever. It's fine. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't. You got one, Kev? Uh, no, I'm not that creative. <clears throat> you don't even have you don't even have a cheap one to do. I'm looking at your stuff, trying to be like, oh, how can I, uh, like, what are some journey f- oh, journey to El Dorado? Journey to El Dorado. What is journey from journey to the center of the earth? It's journey to El Dorado. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this just says your the cut. quest for your cut. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to. Yeah, I don't really. <laughs> I'm just not a creative person. <laughs> to be, I mean, Ooh, to be oh. fair though, that came to my head and I shoved oh, it in and yeah, tried no, to force fair. you guys to make one. About well, the, I don't know, man. Blood and Honey Buzz is that's pretty, pretty good. That's pretty lit. <laughs> uh, I could make. It's not quite perfect, but uh, Ghosts of Terraforming Mars would be one. There's is, a There's a movie. Ghosts of Terror. Probably old, probably older than you are. Uh, called Ghosts of Mars. Oh. Uh, what? Yeah, it was a sci-fi horror film. It's not bad, really... actually. It's like it's John Carpenter, I think, um, huh. or somebody. Some it's based on some decent writer. Can't remember. 
Nice. I don't really think there's anything else up on these shelves you could do something with. Oh, what's that? Um, something. We bought a New York Zoo. There you go. <laughs> we bought a New York Zoo. Yeah. It's just them. So like they, they it's like a really depressing movie about how their business can't make it <laughs> because they decided they're only going to sell pizzas in their zoo and that was what they're going to make most of their money from. But New York is so full of like little mom and pop pizza shops that they don't get any business from that and people don't come into the zoo because they don't care about animals. Wow, that was really sad. Because they go to Central Park and they just and they see all the animals there. Terracotta Army of Darkness. Which one is the movie? Oh, Army of Army Darkness. Army of Darkness. What's we that? just talked about them. Ash. I've never seen that. It's the third one, right? Yeah. Is that the it's zombie like the movie? Good one. No. Is uh, that the Ash Evil Dead one? Yeah. Evil Dead. Yeah. Did you guys see the newest one? No. It's mid. Evil Dead's a great movie. I just like. But at this point, it's just about blood. And yeah. Gore. Yeah. Yeah. So my favorite IP game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody still watching at this point is like I didn't sign up for this I mean if they're watching at this point they know this is a regular thing that's fair uh, Star Wars X-Wing oh that's an easy one and Armada yep and Rebellion and and you like them yeah these are all great I love them I mean I've never seen you play those games <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. You have never seen me play those games. Uh, I have an embarrassing, uh, yeah, embarrassing to admit. That's no surprise again to anybody here, but I own every single ship Oof. from both Star Wars, X-Wing, and Armada. I'm not surprised. Is that expensive? Yeah. Or is it more about the space they take up? Uh, they actually don't take up a lot of space because they got like foam, pluck foam things, and you put them in there, and it's not too bad. But uh, I've played Armada twice and X-Wing twice. Not bad, honestly, for hundreds and of games hundreds in a collection. And hundreds and hundreds you know? and hundreds of dollars. There are some games, them, but cool. I don't care because the miniatures are just so perfect. I, for a long time, I had the the Imperial Star Destroyer, the Super Star Destroyer. I just bought it with no intention to ever actually use it in the game, but just to have it as a model. And I let I put it in my office at work. Was it supposed to be used as a? Yeah, it's part of the game. It's like this big. It was that kind of a gimmick. They were like. No, get this like big they one. literally have like rules for you to play them. That's and I've crazy. seen pictures where people have like they get like the big like like ten by you know eighteen fucking tables and all these massive multi thousand point games and like people will have multiple Super Star Destroyers in the game. Oh, is that a? It's a war game. Or like it's a, a, it a, is skirmish a tabletop or? skirmish game. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Free free movement. You got to bring out rulers. They have fortunately they've got they've got special um, both games have special like things that you're. Uh, to control the movement of them and whatnot, so you don't have to do. It's not quite like uh, yeah. like Warhammer. It's like shaped in like a yep curve. It's like a little plastic piece. I yep. don't need to play skirmisher war games because I don't need to be reminded of what three inches looks like <laughs> every two minutes. Hey man, a a. You think you have? <laughs> think about like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a great explanation. Think about like. It's all subjective, man. You know? <laughs> Imagine like a three inch ant. That's, that's big. That's big. Yeah. That ant can lift the house. A three inch battery? Hey, look. That's a big battery, man. Proportionality matters. Or context. This is more of a context issue. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's a good, you know, <laughs> that's a good deep internal thought to end the show on is um, look for a part of yourself on your body. That may or may not be three inches, you know, and take a deeper re reflection on it. <clears throat> Appreciate yourself a little more. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, God.